Okay. All right, now I'm going to add another header. So back to miscellaneous connectors. And basically the same header as before, 8-pin straight header. I'm going to place it up here. Now this time, I'm going to connect this port here, port A, to this header, but using a bus instead of these straight wires. So with the bus, you need to label all the pins. So these are net labels here. This is how you label a node or a net. So I'm going to just place all these down quickly, and then I'm going to name them. A0 through A7. This is another boring part. You can fast forward, but I can't. Okay. And now I'm going to place these these bus entries here, or bus rippers. And this is how you connect a wire onto a bus. So I'm going to lay a bunch of these down. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the bus. Alright, so just to make my life easier, I'm going to copy all these net names over here. So an important thing to notice with with uh, these net labels is see the X in the, the lower left hand corner? That's where it actually makes the connection. So right now these nets aren't connected to anything. But once I add the wire, you can see the red X in the lower left corner of A0. So now this wire is the net A0. And when you click on it, you can see it says wire net A0. So I'm going to do the same over here. So both ends of a bus need each wire labeled, otherwise it won't know which wire is which. And now we connect connect these uh, with a bus. Oops. All right, let me try that again. All right, so now we have a bus that connects the two, but we need to label the bus with a net label as well. And the form of this net label is A from 0 to 7, or 7 down to 0. Either way, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to save. And I'm going to show you one, one more way to make connections which can also be very handy. So I'm going to duplicate this header over here and I want to connect this header to this port C. Now I could run a bus around the chip but if I had other circuitry it might be a bit messy and harder to read. So I'm going to connect by net only. So if I label both sides with net labels, they're also connected. I don't need physical wires between them. So this will be C0 to C7. Actually, I don't know why we skip B. We'll, we'll call it B0 to B7. Oops. Ah, I see what happened. There's two label, two net labels on top of each other. Wait. 
it. I forgot two. Okay. I'm going to copy and paste those right under those pins. Now this port C is connected directly to this header. And I don't need anything else. Now this is very nice, especially if you need to make a lot of changes or you have some strange non-linear mapping, or I guess non-straight mapping. Um, connecting by net can be very handy. Okay, now before we forget, let's be sure to add bypass capacitors for all of the ICs on the board. So, we're going to add a bypass capacitor for our microcontroller and one for those Schmidt triggers. And we'll connect those between BCC and ground. And I like to label them so I know what's going on. Bypass caps. Now another important thing to add are test points. So in one of my own custom libraries, I have a schematic symbol for a test point. And so you should put test points on your power nodes. As well as any other important nodes in the system. So maybe I'll put one on the reset line as well. They really help when debugging the circuit later. Another thing to be careful of is uh, hidden nets. So if you look at, if you open up, double click on one of these Schmidt triggers and go to edit pins, you'll notice that there are these two ground and VCC pins that are not shown. You can double click on them and see that they are automatically connected to VCC and ground. But this is something you really need to check because that's not always the case. Oftentimes they're unconnected and if you don't catch that you will end up creating a PCB in which your power pins for your chip are not connected and obviously it will never work.